this with regards to a student program? Is there on the course also adding modules, deleting modules, making making requests, timetabling, etc.? Uh, when you say timetabling, everything yes, but I need to drill down on what you mean. That might be a more detailed okay. question, but uh, it, was a more, it was a more general one about how much program, program management, course management. Okay. Absolutely. So, they will, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I think. It is next. When do you have to leave? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let me jump ahead. So you can, you're going you're gonna to create all your curriculum, and yes, they have absolutely. Let me get to the self-service pieces here. Yes. So they could select all of the modules, assuming you allow them to. In other words, they may be compulsory, where they, they don't get any choice. Yeah. Okay. Neil will probably pick that up right. later about the, the so, cultural stuff. Thank you. So yeah, I stole my thunder, but that's that's not pretty cool. no. no. No, it's a great question. So they would have a lot of a lot of those kinds of things at their fingertips, assuming that's what their what you and their program allows them to do. Right? See their marks, their grant, their assessments, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, any other questions? Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. And really, or you could. Yeah. We're, we're way behind. Okay. Yeah. So here, I'll yeah. speak really fast. Um, after after several years and an awful lot of investment by Oracle, um, they have delivered very much based on the UK model, the ability to, to really construct your curriculum and program structures um, really in the way that you want them to be designed. Um, these are just these are not written in stone. What what you're seeing here, program of study, year. These are all building blocks that you create to build your curriculum. Program of study year year could be level, could be year, could be this could be term, could be semester, module, could be course, uh, required, compulsory. All these all these are really yours. These are just samples. And if you think of you know I have a, I have a nine year old soon to be 10 year old, he loves Legos. So I always kind of think of this as, a, as Lego. And what you do is you're creating each item here, and then you're building that curriculum for that particular program. So program of study, year, semester one, semester two, what's mandatory, elective, required, and the modules underneath. Okay. So um, here's a, just a oh, So that's just an example. Yeah. And you have many structures that may be close to that or completely different version. So we don't give you a box and say you fit yourself into this box. Okay. There are some structures in there, some logical ones, but really you create these as, as you as you fit. So here uh, is the uh, an honors um, uh, accounting and finance requirements. Are they optional? Are they required for year um, finance year one? Here's year two, okay, compulsory elective. So this is kind of the output of all of that uh, that you're seeing here. <laughs> Quickly, I just, when, I, when I jumped ahead here, the student in self-service, again, nice, they get to see their, their entire program and plan out that program to whatever level or, or, or how far out you want to allow them to plan those out. So. Um, Maybe you want them to plan. They can see every year of what's required, et cetera, as part of the program. But maybe you'll, you let them plan out just a year at a time, or maybe two years at a time. It's really up to you in terms of how you allow them to plan it out, whether you require advisor input or not. Um, so here's year two. Notice year one, I can select and choose and plan, but I don't have the ability yet to do that. But I could see what's coming. Then year three, year four, etc. Oops, I don't know. Like, you've got any slides on the go fast. This is why I have a Peter Drive. Well, all's fine. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much access do you provide to those students 
is really tied into your control. Um, we, we've got one university that actually pushes out the whole three-year curriculum, and that students should use that whole three-year. Second and third year, the, the knowledge that that might change in the structure changes, but that's okay. From the institutional point of view, that lets them gauge the level of demand for particular courses, which then also helps drive the utilization of space. So it's really valuable for the institutional point of view to be able to get that audience first. Is there anyone so everything from basically the module and up is what Campus Lucent calls program enrollment, okay, the curriculum structure. Everything that's done below the module, think of it kind of think of it that way, which is the assessments, the exams, the marks, etc., is what's called activity management. So program enrollment, activity management is really the full um, kind of spectrum of the curriculum. Absolutely. In fact, whether it's, um, so would you say they were um, lectures, not lectures? Uh, so lecture, the whole module. The whole module. Seminar. Seminars, labs, you know, wh whatever, absolutely. And the way they can do that, when they do their selections, they could, everyone goes into the one lecture, and then they get to pick their seminar or their lab, <laughs> or vice versa, let them select the lab they want and auto, auto enroll them. So there's a lot of ways to do it. Sorry. Um, sorry. Is there validation when, when students are using their to plan their program? Is there validation looking at the rules specific there? There. Where are they in there? Do you have a cohort there in when they start the rules that were in place in that year? Okay. So there are two things behind like that. One is the, I don't know if you noticed, Paul was going through those very good. Yeah. Uh, they're all day stamps. Okay. So when you put in the structure, it's effective as a satisfied those or not, you can let them plan, let's say they're, they're currently in a module, which is a prerequisite for another module in the next year. You can let them plan for that. You might even let them enroll at some point for it before even completing it. Now, but that's a choice. There are checking rules later on to say, well, did, did the student in fact satisfy the prerequisite rule? It will check for time conflicts and, and all those things. So you use one day at an ASAP day to determine who gets to do that. Whereas we have start and end days to chart the history of the state of the model across the line. Yeah. Over an academic year normally. Rather than just picking one day. It's extremely powerful. It also means that if you're looking at what were we doing five years ago, all of that was just that. Yeah, how we have that now as well. It's the same thing. So if you want to do it, that's all we do. How do you, how do you manage changes? In other words, if the module changes, whether it's title or requirements, or is it a... Yeah, that gets captured um, against the different plans in each, you know, the academic year and your own year, you can capture. Similar to the model title change is a straightforward thing, more complex thing are the rules. Yeah. But we do that with the time to start and end date. So in 2015 16, I'm also making the most of the subject. And then we know next year that Yeah. It's, it's almost the same. It's a little bit different. It's here. It's active until it's not. <laughs> um, and so, if the rule were to change, the nice thing about if, what 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 the system actually what we call it is effective date. What's nice about that, though, if you know that rule is changing next year, you can change it today. Effective date for first September next year, and then and then not even think about it. So the program enrollment, I always, I like analogies. I try to always make analogies. I, I, I think of, of, of 
curriculum of a car, the program enrollment is really like the, the body and, and the interior of a car, and it's really the rules engine where you build the rules that say how does a student progress, what is a, a, a passing mark, uh, et, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, students would um, uh, plan their courses uh, or uh, uh, modules to get approved, and APT is the Academic Progress Tracker. And that's part of the program enrollment structure. Um, the calculations based on the rules engine are done, and the progression uh, process determines whether they met requirements or not, proceed to the next year, or proceed, or, or whether it's at module level, or progression uh, year to year as well. I think it's called, oh, goodness. <laughs> I'll give a thousand pounds, everyone can read that. <laughs> this is really. This is what the rules engine actually looks like um, in terms of just how you build a rule. I'd say it's semi-programmatic um, um, in, its, in its form. I mean, you just have to understand uh, some of the programming here. But it is completely your rules. I mean, they, you design them, define them, um, and without help, of course, and, um, and put them in. Um, as you see fit. Again, no box. We're not, we're not trying to horseshoe you into a shoe of a specific size at all. So you build all the tools. Let me add that, of course, because we work with huge industrial transfers, so you don't have to design those tools. When Simon, we've got cycles for the next implementation, we know how to maintain them, and should the situation change in the future, we know how to check <coughs> to accommodate those changes, because you can guarantee it's going to change. So you give, we're giving you the flexibility of the structure of the way in which that's interpreted to really help you pretty much every single situation you can possibly have. And this is just the page. So this is actually at the module level that we're calculating uh, pass. Okay. Any other questions on do you have a way uh, when you see this coming in, say you want to automatically generate first year rules and so on, you get here at all their modules that need to do one. Is there a way of doing that for five thousand students? Yeah. All the time by pressing a button in a program. It's it's there, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So it's kind of manual. Mm. It's in that situation. What we say it's almost the it's the uh, the ninety ten rule. Do 90% of them. Any of them are slightly different, you let go. Right. Yeah, so we've got to do more planning, and then you just do the outcomes, do not want to do the And to Peter's point, there, there are certainly uh, ways of uh, overriding, changing, you know, if you have an exception for a particular student, all right, you, we'll, give, we'll, we'll let you do that module instead of that module. You can certainly make those kinds of exceptions at a student by student uh, basis, or even a group by group basis. I mean, you could, Okay, for this particular group of students, we're going to make this exception. I showed you a little bit about self-service already um, in terms of uh, uh, what Philip can do. What I want to actually show is more from your perspective. Um, So I'm I've, I've logged in, or I'm, I'm back logged in as, a, as an administrator, okay? And I pulled up uh, Philip's record, um, and this is what is called the Student Services Center. So from an administrative perspective, this is really kind of a holistic view of the student and what's going on, okay? What do you, what do you notice, though, on the first tab? We're looking at Philip's Student Center. So we're seeing what Philip is seeing in self-service. Okay. So very often, you know, you get those calls, students, I'm looking at this balloon and it says this, and you're like, I, I have no idea what you're looking at. That. But so you actually, you actually have capabilities. You can't do anything transactional here, but you do have the capability of actually drilling in to see again what he's seeing in more detail. Okay, so it's just not necessarily this this particular page. Now, as as we go through. We got a general information page here, or tab. And so it's telling me 
what are those service indicators that we saw? So I can see the, um, the library find. What you notice though is uh, Philip has five service indicators, some positive with the star, some negative with the Ghostbuster sign. I'm not sure what it's actually called. Um, but that were not displayed to the student in self-service. So you have those kind of configuration control about what you display or not display. So if you notice the star and the Ghostbuster, so anywhere in Philip's record, no matter what page you're looking at, those go with him. And from any page, you'll be able to drill in and see these indicators. Scholarship student, library participation, student's not progressing. Maybe a student has a disability, or you want to highlight you know, a mature student or, or, or whatnot. Um, on, on that screen, you said that um, the, the administrator or the person that would be able to do anything on that screen. Is it possible that an advisor would be able to work with the student's program? So, for example, the student says, what do I want to do this? What's your program? Can I do it? So, yeah. Can you, can I apologize. You I, I, I misspoke. I, they only can't do anything on the student side of that. Everything that we're seeing here, they can start going in and doing things like, like that. If they want to change and model programs, absolutely. There's that capability. On the student center tab, again, that's just what the student sees, so that's why there's no transactional information. But now, if I want to go in as an administrator and edit my service indicators, review checklists, update addresses, um, look at what student groups the, the, the student is in, all the person I could go in and edit from here. And the same with as we go across, so from an admissions perspective, now I'm looking at all the applications that Philip has submitted if I have access. And let me be clear about that because if I don't have admissions access, I'll just see a big blank up there, basically. Don't say you don't have access to this. If you notice, he's got a, a postgraduate and a batch and an undergraduate application. I may not be able to see both of those either. We can control at the user level. Maybe you're just an undergraduate admissions <coughs> counselor, administrator, et cetera. So we can give you and parse out uh, access to just undergraduates, just undergraduate chemistry students, et cetera, postgraduate research only. So that's, uh, again, I'm a super user, so I can see everything here. Um, the app, what we call applicant progression, whether they were a prospect applicant, student. I do want to go back here. I do want to highlight something very quickly. There's, there's an enormous amount of information that's captured in Campus Solutions on a student, and you know, not all of it is, is on a, necessarily on a page. There is a notion of related content. So if I want to, what I've done is I've configured this to say, I need to look at comments that's, that tutors or advisors have made, et cetera. But there's no, nowhere up here in any of these tabs can I get quickly to a comment here. Well, I can actually build that in. <laughs> And what it does is it actually splits my screen, and now I can go look at all the comments right, as an example. I can also bring in external content through here as well. So internal campus solutions content, uh, reporting, anal analytics, et cetera, uh, as well as uh, his academic information, so his program, uh, what he's majoring in, studying, concentrating in, have you, and then term by term or year by year, semester by semester, uh, I can look at what his enrollment is, uh, statistics, etc. And again, I can go in to your to your earlier question. If I want to update this, I can go right in from there, update a record, and then come back out. Financial information, again, year by year. What does he know? Payment plans, refunds. Uh, there is part of the collection is, is the aging process. Uh, we've learned that as well. And then, I'm not sure he has any data, but any scholarship bursaries, SLC information here as well. Um, there is.
either, uh, you have advisors, tutors, right? Um, that are assigned to particular students. Uh, okay, so I've gone in from another self-service perspective, the advisee center. So Edward Lippman is the tutor advisor. These are the students that are assigned to him. And he can see <clears throat> all these things. We can include the photos. These are all the students. There's Philip, well, that guy. Uh, I can drill into the details. And again, very similar. Advisor can see self-service. Now, for advisors, we stripped out the, the financial information. But you can, I mean, if you feel your advisor should have access to financial information, it's entirely up to you. But again, they can go across general information, academics, etc. cetera. Um, there's also committee, if, if for, perhaps on the more, more so on the, on the postgraduate, and more so probably on the postgraduate research side, maybe a uh, committee type of, of, of advising. Um, so that's supportive as well. Um, as well as a faculty center. So for the instructors, they can see their timetable, uh, the, the, the modules they're, they're teaching, um, the enrollment work, the enrollments of each, and then go in and actually look at the enrolled students, um, link out to, I don't think I have it linked here, um, if, if we're linking to Moodle, they would be able to one click go out to Moodle from here as well. So here's their enrollment. There are students who are enrolled in the module. And both from the student perspective as well as from uh, the advisee as well as the um, um, instructor. Um, again, they can see the photos, who's enrolled. Um, I can, just, the instructor or advisor can notify selected students or notify all students. Now what's interesting, it says, hey, these folks don't have an email address. You can enforce that then, you can actually make sure, through, particularly through the registration process, that there's at least one valid email address on everybody's record. Uh, so continue and, you know, uh, class canceled, uh, and they can send that notification right from the system. Center, Student Services Center. I'd be the first to say that that interface that you saw is not the most popular. Um, Oracle, again, has invested an enormous amount of resources, both person and monetary, in completely redesigning the self service. This will be out in three weeks, <laughs> four weeks. Or they see, see, salespeople, they don't like to <laughs> tell you about future things because it gets them in trouble. Uh, I'm not, so I can't. Um, so it is, it is a complete redesign, much more modern interface, tile-based, you know, use your finger to get to where you want to go. The information is much cleaner. Um, it's all, for, the, for any of the technical people in the room, it's all um, HTML5. Uh, so it's, it's uh, going to be very, very different than what I'm showing you. <laughs> but that's what we have today in terms of the um, you know, student center and the faculty center. So, these, so the first iteration will be for the student um, and rolling all of this out. What, what we're showing and talking about here is a browser experience. There is a companion purpose-built mobile app as well that connects with campus solutions. And that was something we would talk about. What's your strategy? What, you know, what do you see? If you have a true modern browser experience, do you want need a purpose-built app? Okay, that's, you know, 
I'll leave that rhetorical, but that's that's something you need to be a lot of thought about. This is part of the solution. It comes with it. It hooks right into it. It obeys all the same security. There are specific high-value transactions that are delivered with the uh, mobile app, uh, from schedules to enrollment to uh, marks and grades, finances to make a payment, the to-dos, the notifications. You can even, within the system, you can map where um, longitude and latitude of the, of the module so that they can actually see it on a, on a campus map. So those kinds of things are available in, in the mobile app as well. I, I mentioned the registration process. Um, delivered with Campus Solutions are activity guides. This is that step-by-step -step process of whatever that process is. So if you think about a registration, so introduction, they're going to go through, check your addresses, update your addresses, phone numbers, emergency contacts, and through each one they would mark, yes, completed, yes, I read it, yes, I agree, to move on through the process. Academic, maybe uh, check their financial regulations, make a payment if they owe money, and finally perhaps to go to enrollment from there. Once they complete all of the steps, this is completely configurable. These steps can be dependent on each other. You can't do four until you do five, et cetera, or they can jump and skip. The nice thing is as well, you, all the data is captured. So if all of a sudden you're running a report and you see that you know, 4,000 students have stopped after step three, there's something wrong, or something, <laughs> something about step three that isn't quite right. Okay? They were describing something for crap, they're getting caught up on something, so all of that. <coughs> Service requests, the ability to design communication from a student's perspective into uh, Oxford Brooks. So, not that we, not that any student complains here. Let's say they want to register a complaint, you know, they want to submit a thesis, they want to, you can recreate all of these um, uh, service requests in the system. They fill it out, you've got the kitten. Uh, and they can add, even add attachment support documentation to whatever this service request is. And then this gets routed to the lucky individual or individuals on the administrative side to resolve, respond, um, etc. This is the administrative side, so add a comment, reassign, send notification, etc. Um, we talked about forms and approval builder. Um, Okay. <laughs> Moving through. Any questions? Yes. You're American dates in your stats. So I'm familiar with So you have to be your stats in your career. Well, so two things. How many questions do you have to be in America? Absolutely not. Um, and can you re, um, relabel the labels for drop tax? Like yeah, so these, some of these slides are coming from somebody who put them together from the states. My, my version actually, um, is the, the UK English, so things are spelled correctly. <laughs> and actually, dates are actually controlled by the individual. Um, you, can, you can actually configure how you want your dates to, to react. You can default it all in and not even give people access to change that. That's up to you. Um, but it will absolutely follow all the UK protocols. Now, the other thing you talked about, Bill, was um, so there's I have three languages. <coughs> the other thing you talked about was the labels. So yes, with the however, <laughs> what I mean by that is part of what we'll work with you on is you know does it make sense? Yeah, what is career? Okay, it actually makes sense from a campus solutions perspective that label. May not make sense now, but part of the discussion we'll have is does it make sense to go through the effort of changing that label? Students rarely will see that label, and if they do, that's where we want to make those kinds of changes to things that they're not going to really understand. From an administrative perspective, from a staff perspective, it's just it's learning a new system. The academic structure is institution, career, program, and plan. What's a plan? Well, that's kind of what they're doing in English, chemistry, finance. So it's, it is, we, we, we saw the global map up there, so the terms 
are generic to kind of incorporate whatever you whatever you think a career is. That's what it, that's what it is in a sense. No, no, right, right. And at the end of the day, if you want to change that label, there's almost no impact whatsoever. We just spent an inordinate amount of time talking to <laughs> a, a, a prospective customer about Seamus. Um, nothing out of the box, but that's part of what we will do, which is um, work and build that in interface. You can manually go in and enter uh, uh, what, what campus would we'll call meeting patterns and buildings and rooms and you know, sign those things, but really you don't want to do that, particularly if you have Seamus or anything. There are customers who are already running interfaces with uh, Seamus. Uh, Dar Darby and Glasgow actually are running Seamus. Although I think Darby might, might have changed. Change. Okay. So whether it's whether it's Seamus, whether it's CMTS, Solus Plus, uh, you know, we can we'll work with you on integrating to those things as well. Yes, you want it to come back. It, it'll re, it'll do things a little bit differently, reorganize things a little differently. But for the students, this, it'll be the same uh, in terms of, of, of what they're looking at. Um, but again, that's where we want that that single view for the student. We don't want them to go to seven different places to look at timetable, to look at an account, to look at something or, or whatever. So, not only are we are we going to be pulling data out of Campus Solutions into Seamus, they're going to run that optimization with timetable, and that's going to come back into Campus Solutions. Um, UCAS, HESA, UKBI, SLC, um, all Very good at uh, turning these changes around, some of which I'm sure you aware can be a very, very short notice. So that's a good conversation to have with customers. Last July, August, um, the UCAS updates, Oracle delivered them before UCAS. Yes? support all of those but from a from a tools you know from there's a number of different reporting tools which we're going to talk about in just a second so extracting the data that those regulatory agencies need you know the, the, the ability is certainly there to do oh super recording oh 
Oh, any, anything else on statutory? Sorry, have you um, done much And UCAS. UCAS is looking at changing their uh, ODBC links and you know, how they deliver that. So, so the organization up here, or Nick, <laughs> you know, that's what he. Yeah. Both of the So this line right here, everything to the left is delivered with Campus Solutions. So nothing extra there. There's the um, ad hoc PeopleSoft query. And this is that, that transactional reporting right out of the database. How many students enrolled last week in this particular program? Oh, it's a point and click SQL writer. Um, it's really a it's not, a, it's not a necessarily a tech, technical tool. Um, I would say, you know, trained, trusted end users. <laughs> um, because again, you are accessing the transactional system, so there have been reports into the, into the support center that, you know, our, our query is supposed to run for three days. Um, so you, you, you can manage that very well, very easily. Um, you see outputs and so forth. So any field in the system can be reported on, even customized fields can be reported on. Another tool, BI Publisher, is really about production, um, formatting. The if you if you need to produce a hair report, most of our customers are using BI Publisher because it's really about not just data, but it's about formatting, it's about uh, uh, language, it's about how it looks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in fact, I'm not sure way more on the Oracle text side. A lot of the other Oracle applications actually also embed the unpublished in their, in their applications. Pivot Grids, you saw an example on my desktop. Pivot Grid actually takes a query and then goes one to actually three or four steps further with it. You can build graphical representations of those queries, but beyond that, it's also drill, the, the ability to slice and dice that information and drill down and drill back. So not only can you drill into the report to get more information, so here I've, I've got a pivot grid of account balances. So I can look by account. I can look by um, by departments, by programs, by semesters, by years. I can hover, it'll give you my total. If I click on a detailed view, I can see the detail on, on that. Or even drill down, I can actually drill back to the source system, actually, to get whatever that detail is underneath, underneath that. Um, so, and this can be deployed, as you see, on a desktop. I can change it if I prefer uh, bar graph, pie charts. Now beyond that, to the right of that line, there is what's called student information analytics. And this is really your, um, your warehouse type of reporting analytics. Okay. The, the, 
benefit of student information analytics is it is very much a pre-built solution. If anyone has any experience building data warehouses, you know what a real pain it is <laughs> to, to do that. They are they are very, very difficult. When Oracle delivers, they deliver hundreds of metrics already out of the box, ETL schemas already out of the box to jump start that. It really shrinks. They say it takes about seven years to build a, a data warehouse from scratch to where it's mostly operational. This will take it down to a year to a few months to get just to get going. It, 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 it's, it's almost out of the box. Now, of course, you can add to it. You can bring in data from other sources through the ETL tools, etc. The, the analytics that sit on top of it is also part of the solution. So part of the discussion will be, do we continue with business objects, which we can use on top of this, or do we, you know, you know what's going to be the best way to move forward for that? Technical features, uh, yeah, I talked about HTML5, any tablet, phone, laptop, computer, et cetera. We talk about, we haven't really talked about deployments, we'll just talk about this really quickly. We can pretty much do anything that Oxford Books wants to do in terms of a deployment strategy. You want it on-prem, you want it managed by us on-prem, you want it managed by us in our data center, we can kind of do just about anything. We can even do it on a subscription basis. Uh, for some of our technical folk, um, Lots of ways to integrate with PeopleSoft and Campus Solutions to your other systems on campus, whether it's HR, finance, library, accommodation, et cetera, supporting all kinds of, of manners at different levels and layers of the architecture. These are all the standards that PeopleSoft supports. Um, so you're really good to go here. <laughs> Services. These are actually the delivered web services, constituent web services. So when we have to move people data in or out, those web services are there. So if you want to sync up your, your student system with your HR system, that can be done. We talk about admissions web services. We talk about payment web services. Enrollment, if you want to do some enrollment transactions outside of Campus Solutions, then we talk about SAIP, the VLE web services as well. <laughs> okay. That was just a ton of stuff, uh, I know, at a real high level. So I hope, I hope you got a little bit of a flavor. We, we would be glad to take any questions you have. Yes? Um, look at the charges. How are they determined for each student? Is it calculated? It's probably one of the more robust features of the system, which is the ability to, I'm trying to think what is the best way to show you this. I'm sure I like the way Actually, I'm going to go to one of the features that you can construct, which is a work center. You know, I talked about the navigation having large user navigation. This is actually what most of you folks would be looking at. This is what's called a work center. Just really, it just groups. This is what I do. This is what I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm just going to work right in here. Um, the tuition calculation process is, like I said, one of the more robust features of the system. When you create a fee, you just assign different parameters. You can charge a lot of different ways, whether it's a flat amount, a per unit amount, and a unit really is anything, credit, et cetera, depending on how you define those kinds of things. So you're setting it against a type of student on a type right. of course. So then back here, well, it could be at the, it could be at the module level, or of course, or of course level. It could be a combination of those things. If there's a lab fee, you know, we can incorporate that as well. But essentially what you're doing, when you define a, a fee, 9,000 pounds a year, you're then assigning a fee trigger criteria. And that criteria can be theoretically, well, criteria is a limited amount. An equation can use anything. So if I look at that criteria, that UK student criteria, I'm going to say if their tuition residency, and that's a field on the residency page, is equal to, or greater than, or whatever, then they get charged out of it. Okay. Okay. 
that. I can add as many rows here. I can add this criteria to include anything. This is what's delivered criteria. Student group. So if you've got a student group widening participation, you can have a, a group called student group called blonde hair. If I want to charge <laughs> my hair color, I can put students in groups and charge them accordingly. Um, term information, country, postal code. Does she do it studying in the fall when you put that in the group, for example? Well, actually, yes, but there are better ways of uh, analyzing that because we know, see, the admit term, that's when they actually start. That's the, that's the year and semester that they began here. So we can use that as criteria to say, well, you came in then, we're going to charge you differently. Okay. Um, institution terms, study agreement, study agreement, important because it could be we can automate study abroad students. Sometimes those are those are exceptions because we know where they are. Um, we can calculate them separately. Um, withdrawn department code, uh, pay code, and then if you don't like those, you've got 30, 30 user defined, uh, ten character, ten yes no, ten numeric. So yes, no, number one is blonde hair. Got blonde hair? Go get charged. Less, less since you're asking the question. Um, that's criteria. I also talked about the equation engine. The equation engine is essentially an if then else processor. Here you get real detail because if the student is in an undergraduate in this program and international and it's Tuesday and the moon is full, the charge of this. But we can open learning full-time, part-time. Exactly. Any, see, this is a limited data set of 106 characters. The equation is you can look at any field in the entire campus admissions system. Okay. So if, if they meet this criteria, then charge them this. Else, if they meet this criteria, then charge them this way. Else, so... Yeah. I have, I have, as long as you can write it down logically. Yeah. Then and we're capturing the data. We can segment out students as granular as you need as you need to do. I've never met a tuition uh, schedule uh, uh, spine or whatever you would call it that we could <laughs> that we couldn't handle. Oh, no, no, no. Plus one of the things about that is because you used to be in the product in directive development for student financials. So you couldn't tell you know, <laughs> I get I, my, that's my passion, which is high normally anyway, but my passion tends to go up another level with that. So, any any um, other questions? Uh, yeah, you, you tied, so I'll just go with you. <laughs> um, I didn't see um, any element of um, advanced management concept in what we're doing today. Okay, I'll be. Is it there? It's well, uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> Now, what on earth do I mean by that? Um, how good is the look at it? So, when I say yes, I mean yes because it is there. <laughs> it's fairly limited. Um, it's it's not used you know, in a lot of it, you know, by a lot of different institutions. It can do some things very very well, manage certain events kind of well. There's no self service aspect to these kinds of things, etc. Where that actually lives as and if, if as we go through the process, if we're invited back, we would like to show you more things like our. Um, marketing cloud solutions, which have much more robust event piece to it, where you can do signups online and do all those kinds of things that we that, that integrated into campus solutions. So that's what I mean by yes, but no. <laughs> so let's just put that in a bit more context. So I went in a conversation with someone the other day. Oracle are moving a lot of their applications to the cloud. Trying to move campus solutions to the cloud is a small job. <laughs> um, so what we're doing is we're doing it in what I ask of management chunks. So everything that you've seen effectively today is a single solution. However, there are some things that we can do sort of around the edge.